Hi everyone, um, so there's been a couple of requests to see how my setup works with the Boss Katana linked up with the Line 6 Helix. In this case it's an LT and I'm using the LT but for what I'm doing this setup should work also for the, the HX effects and the full Helix. It's set up in the four cable method. If you don't know how that works, I urge you to go and have a look on the, say YouTube to find out how that works. But basically you get the best of both worlds with being able to put your signal chain either before or after a preamp. In this case, I've got the preamp of the boss with a few effects here and there that I use within the amp. But then I've got things like distortions or overdrives or compressors, that sort of thing from the Helix going into the boss katana and then from the katana out back into the helix and then the helix runs all the things after say some of the modulations that i've got in there or delays reverbs those sorts of things i also use this for the wah as well which is set up before going in the boss so i've kind of got the best of both worlds and the good thing about the Helix is that the Helix has got a signal chain which is much more superior than the signal chain um, in terms of versatility than the Boss Katana. Boss Katana is pretty much one straight line and you get, what, three, three different choices, four different choices, something like that. The um, Helix, if you look at, um, sorry, I hope you can see that. If you look at the signal chain, you've got one up here and then one down here and you can have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight on the top line, another eight on the bottom line. And you can split that into two. So you've got another eight on that one and you can split that one into two. So you've got another eight on there. So you get potentially 32, as should we call them, effects whether those effects might be, you know, a volume control, a gain control, compressor, modulation, like an effects loop, for example, is, is one. An effects send and return, for example, those sorts of things. So you've got all sorts of ways to set this up. Apologies for the reflection of that. That's my um, where my camera is going to be set up in a second. That's not a finger there. That's part of, sorry, that's my phone. There we go. So that's hopefully you see that a bit better there. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to how I set mine up. Uh, if it's helpful for you, then great. Then feel free to ask me any questions about how this setup works or you know, if I don't cover anything in here. I'm just going to do kind of like an introductory part of this. So hopefully it will help. One thing to do, first of all, in your Boss Katana is go into the Boss studio thing tone studio whatever it's called on on your pc and make sure that your uh, your effects loop is turned on whatever channel you've picked you make sure your effects loop is turned on otherwise this won't work you won't get any sound out of it or it'll just sound pretty poor okay uh for this purpose what i've got eq set flat i've got a little bit of reverb on I haven't touched any of these and um, there's a little bit of presence let's set that to 12 o'clock a little bit of master it's set on the 50 watt setting. I've got it, uh, let's switch to D, uh, vintage rather on that one. And you'll hear what's just going on live. You know, there's, uh, I won't bother putting it through the PC or anything. I'll just let uh, my camera pick it up. I've got it on the clean channel at the moment, but we'll go through a few different uh, amp types as we go through it. Okay, so without further ado, let's set up a signal chain and show you what this can do. Right, here we go. I hope you can all see that. Apologies for a few reflections and you might be able to see my head every now and then. But at the moment, I've just got nothing running through the Helix. I've got it plugged yeah, via the four cable method. So effectively, what's happening with this, with the effects loop on, on the Boss Katana, I am running from my guitar straight through the effects return and then out. So there's no preamp. There's nothing, and this is what it is. It's just, that's what you get. Without further ado, what we need to do on here to get it running through 
to the amp. If you're familiar with the signal chain on the Boss Tone Studio, it's not that dissimilar here with the signal chain, but if I go too fast or anything like that, feel free to put comments in below and I'll try and get back to you. This is what we need to do. First of all, we need to put, I'm putting a mono effects loop in there. So effects loop, boom, there it is, in and out. So now it's just taken that edge off the power amp that it was going through. So this is what it sounded like before. It's all quite in your face and now That's going directly through the, the clean channel with the EQ all flat, presence flat. And, and that's, that's how you would set that up in its simplest form. Once you've set that up, some of the other little tricks that I found that you can do is, let's, sorry, let's just move that there. Let's put a distortion in front of it. Okay, we've got distortions and overdrives and things like that on the Boss Katana, but you're limited, you know, you might want to put a compressor and a distortion on there, for example. You know, why not put the compressor on the amp and have the distortion here? You could do that. So you've got a bit of gain there, just a little, you know, a little bit more, that's without. It's just slightly boosting it and that's just kind of like a like a tube screamer type of thing going on. The other options you can do, say you want two amps running at the same time um, and you want your clean channel of your Boss Katana, but also running in parallel, you want a slight bit of dirt or distortion running at the same time, you can do that. What we've got here at the moment, if I just run... <laughs> What's happening here is I'm running a preamp, which is called the Placator Dirty, into the preamp of the Katana. So you don't, I, you, you might want preamp into preamp. You can use these preamps as distortions as well. In which case, you know, you've got all your drives and things like that. You can, um, sorry, all your EQs on here. So you can really, you know, kind of, um, you can really, you know, sort of push certain, certain frequencies. But one trick that I did learn was, if I was to do this, and this is something you cannot do on the Boss Katana, but you can do on the Helix. So why not put an amp next to your amp? So basically you've got two going on at the same time. Now what's gonna happen here is, it probably won't be balanced. So you've got one really loud and really, one really quiet. But basically, there's a clean sound. Running in parallel with the dirty sound. So basically you can get two amps running at the same time. You could even run that directly into your amp. You can run this directly into your amp and you could technically have three maybe four amps at the same time all running here. You know, it's it's not endless, obviously, but, you know, four amps, you'd struggle to get anything else, you know, due to the limitations of the um, Helix. An amp takes up a lot of space. Preamps don't, uh, not as much as amps, but there's all sorts of things you can do in that. What you can also do is if I run a volume after that and just turn it down what's happening now is the signal chain is going to go around there hit the preamp come back in and it can't go any further than that because I've just turned it down so and what you can do is you can set up any of your foot switches to say okay um, here's my dirty channel and then next switch will say okay if I switch that then thank you very much I will turn this up to full and I will turn that down to zero kind of thing and that would be
and you can do that and you can switch between them. Um, I just haven't set that up on snapshot mode, but that's what you can do. For example, you can then set up things like the tube screamer just against one amp. So you can put the tube screamer pushing the um, So the tube screamer is going into the Boss Katana and then running parallel with that is this placator. So you can get quite an aggressive tone out of that. Not aggressive metal, but just... It's nice and, you know, you can push it. Basically, you can mix it how you want as well. So if you want less of this, just turn down the volume of that. So it's just running in the background. You know, it's just whatever you want, you know, you can. So that's another trick. Let's say you want to go for a phaser in there. You can go after one of the amps, so we've got this. Or you can run it before everything. Yeah. Right, you know, I, I obviously can't play that. But um, you get the gist. You can do all those sorts of things. You can swap channels with this. So one amazing thing with this is if we go to, let's go to channel one, you see that that goes on there, it's off on channel one. So you can just, you know, assign whatever you want to each, each foot switch. So if we go to the command center, along here, each one of these represents one of your foot switches across here. And this is your foot pedal. These two are your external kind of foot switches. Um, so in this one here, what we want to do, sorry, I missed it, bank or rather program. Um, we're not going to mess about with any of the CC messaging or anything like that for this purpose. I haven't got into that, to be honest, but as far as I can tell, you can switch. I could be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can switch individual effects from here on the boss katana but i'm not 100 percent yet so i just do that within the helix so if i go to bank slash program i keep it on base because it already talks to the right midi channel on the boss katana if you don't know about midi channeling um what channel you should go to chances are if you don't know what channel your boss katana is on it's usually one but there is a way of finding out by pressing like the, you know, the channels on the front of your Boss Katana. Um, there is a video somewhere of it on YouTube that I found and I did that and it was on, I think, channel one, which is what we would normally use. So basically, I haven't had to touch that. But if your Boss Katana is on channel one, yeah, you could say channel one. If it's on channel two, so on and so forth. So if you've got more than one MIDI device then you would assign it to your specific MIDI device number. So yeah, I ignore these, but these sorts of things, at the moment it's program off. If I go to program zero, that would switch the Boss Katana to channel one of your preset. Number one is channel two. Number two is channel three and so forth. And you can go through all of them and I think you know, you get to the end and you can choose panel as well as your um, as one of the choices. So basically it becomes a nine channel amp. It's extremely useful. So for me, for what I use, I go sort of clean, crunch, dirty, solo, for example. For clean, I'd make sure that's on program zero to choose channel one. That I would have on channel one on here to choose preset channel two on the Boss Katana. And this one would be two, and this one would be three, for example. So this would choose on your amp, 
preset one, two, three, four. And then if I've got anything weird and wonderful going on, I might go um, on bank B, channel one, channel three, channel three, channel four. That's how it kind of works on the surface. So if I show you, um, if we go back to here, if I now, hang on a minute, let's turn that off, that off, that off. On this channel, I chose number two on here. So number two on here relates to number three on the Bos Katana. Number three on the Bos Katana, I have programmed to be the crunch channel with a slight boost um, using the blues driver. So, so now if I just want to go through directly through the crunch to the crunch channel, I would need to block this off here. So if I add volume and a volume pedal again, and then turn that down to zero, that blocks that off. So nothing's going direct to the effects return in the Bos Katana. And this... So basically, by closing all these off and just having that open, which is the send and return, and the volume up on it, I am just using the Bos Katana. Okay, the volume's different. I haven't set these up for you know, matching volumes or anything like that to, you know, be gig ready. But I'm just, just showing you the possibilities there. Um, and then this one, program number one. So it's switching to preset number two on the Boss Katana. So again, if we turn all these off, and that's down to zero, turn that off and turn that off. What I've got is crunch, but no boost. So that's channel three on the Boss Katana with the boost. Without the boost, channel two. With the boost, channel three. So what you can do is you could say, oh, okay, well, I don't want, you know, I only want one setting within the Boss Katana. I want the Helix to do everything else. You could do that. You can only, you, you don't have to use all the channels within the Boss Katana equally. You know, you can have, as I do, channels one, two, three, and four set up for, I think it's clean, crunch, distortion, and acoustic for one type of guitar, and then I've got a totally different guitar with single coils in it, which obviously you know, is totally different sounding than this, and needs different EQs, it needs different settings and stuff like that. So I'll use Bank B, Channel 1, Channel 2, Channel 3, Channel 4, for my clean, crunch, full gain, and acoustic. Everything else is then driven by this, with either overdrives, running things alongside things, putting extra EQs in this to you know shape that tone specifically. I mean one thing that's really good with the Helix versus the Boss Katana is you're at a gig, you know, you play your guitar and you think something in the room sounds terrible. You can't go in the katana without your PC. You could do the phone or the um the iPad app or, or you know use that kind of thing but you're a bit limited in what you can use with that. Whereas this, if I've got an EQ in here, we can go straight to somewhere like the Global EQ and go, oh, okay, right. Something sounding off, which one, which frequency is it? You know, I've got a full parametric EQ there, um, you know, where you can apply it to, all that sort of thing, which is quite useful. The other thing you can do as well, let's go back to home here, um, is you can have your amp on stage using one particular volume. So imagine that line there is the amp. This line here is going to the effects return, for example, or whatever. Um, 
you can have this line here coming from either of those or however you wish to go out via um, XLR to the front of house. You can have literally any combination of everything that you want. You can have your amp on stage, nice and loud, going amp with the Helix, or you can go amp on stage at a relatively low volume, use the Helix going to the front of the house, um, so there's no miking up or anything like that. And if you need more volume on stage, you just turn it up. There's no worries about volume or anything like that in terms of the front of the house or monitoring or anything. So it's really, really versatile using this thing. I've literally just touched the surface with this. There's loads, loads, loads more that you can do. If you've got any questions or if you would like to hear maybe a particular, you know, what does the Boss Katana sound with this setting sound like if I run this amp or that amp alongside it you know for those that aren't you know sort of aware of what amps there are in the helix you know brick 224 2204 is you know your Marshall 2204 we've got plexis in there we've got uh that's an orange a uh, matchstick we've got uh AC30s um that is your um Roland Chorus I think or JC120 I think something like that um you've got all sorts of things in there um and then you know as you go through them they get higher and higher gain style you know more kind of metal lamps and stuff you've got Placator which is one of my you know go-to ones cartographer uh Ubersonic which is the Ubershell these are your rectifiers, this is all your Mesa Boogies, Archetype, which is PRS, that's ENGL, that's Soldano, PV Panama, that's your 5150, uh, the Rev Red channel, that's a good one. Um, and then there's Line 6, just you know, their own ones, which actually surprisingly sound very, very good. So if you want to hear any of those in parallel with the Boss Katana sounds, yeah, just drop a comment down below and just say, yeah, I want to hear what the brown sound on the Boss Katana sounds like, you know, versus the PV5150, so, uh, something like that. You know, you can, or, you know, any combination of anything, you might want something, you know, what does the uh, the Tube Screamer sound like pushing the brown channel or what's the Tube Screamer in front of the lead channel or the clean channel or, you know, what about the... Chief screen in front of the acoustic channel. You know, why not? Um, there's literally anything you do. So just ask. I will endeavour to, you know, put a video together and see what we can rustle up. hope this has been useful for anybody that's interested in it. Thanks very much.